I am thy father's spirit. From Hamlet, Act 1, Scene 5. This is a LibriVox recording. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jim Catwell. I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast in fires, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres, thy knotted and combined locks to part, and each particular hair to stand an end like quills upon the fretful porcupine. But this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood. List, list, O oh list, if thou didst ever thy dear father love, O oh God, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul, as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Haste me to know it that I, with wings as swift as meditation or, or thoughts of love, may sweep to my revenge. I find thee apt, and duller shouldst thou be than the fat weed that roots itself in ease on leafy wharf, wouldst thou not stir in this. Now, Hamlet, hear. Tis given out that, sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. So the whole ear of Denmark is, by a forged process of my death, rankly abused. But know, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle! Ay, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts, O oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce, one to his shameful lust, the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there! From me, whose love was of that dignity that it went hand in hand even with the vow I made to her in marriage, and to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor to those of mine. But virtue as it never will be moved, though lewdness courted in a shape of heaven, so lust though to a radiant angel linked will sate itself in a celestial bed and prey on garbage. But soft, methinks I sent the morning air, brief let me be, sleeping within mine orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour thy uncle stole, with juice of cursed hebanon in a vial and in the porches of mine ears did pour this leprous distilment, whose effect holds such enmity with blood of man that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body, and with a sudden vigour it doth posset and curd like eager droppings into milk the thin and wholesome blood, so did it mine, and a most instant tetter barked about, most lazar-like with vile and loathsome crust, all my smooth body. Thus was I, sleeping, by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin, unhouseled, disappointed, unannealed, no reckoning made but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible! Oh, horrible! Most horrible! If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. 
Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsoever thou pursuest this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven, and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Fare thee well at once. The glow-worm shows the matin to be near, and gins to pale his uneffectual fire. Adieu, adieu, Hamlet. Remember me. End of I Am Thy Father's Spirit From Hamlet, Act One, Scene Five this recording is in the public domain. The Witch's Brew From Act Four, Scene One of Macbeth by William Shakespeare Read for LibriVox.org by Marianne Spiegel Thrice the brindled cat hath mewed, Thrice and once the hedge-pig whined. Harpier cries, "'Tis time, tis time, Round about the cauldron go, In the poisoned entrails throw, Toad that under cold stone Days and nights has thirty-one Sweltered venom sleeping got, Boil thou first e the charmed pot. Double, double toil and trouble, Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Fillet of a fenny snake In the cauldron boil and bake, Eye of newt and toe of frog, Wool of bat and tongue of dog, Adder's fork and blind worm's sting, Lizard's leg and howlet's wing, For a charm of powerful trouble, Like a hell-broth boil and bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Scale of dragon, Tooth of wolf, witch's mummy, Maw and gulf of the ravened salt sea shark, Root of hemlock digged i' the dark, Liver of blaspheming Jew, Gall of goat, and slips of yew Silvered in the moon's eclipse, Nose of Turk and Tartar's lips, Finger of burst strangled babe Ditch delivered by a drab, Make the gruel thick and slab. Add thereto a tiger's chaldron, For the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double toil and trouble, Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Cool it with a baboon's blood, Then the charm is firm and good. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. More Strange Than True, spoken by Theseus, from A Midsummer Night's Dream, Act 5, Scene 1. This is a LibriVox recording. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Tis strange what these lovers speak of, more strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have such seething brains, such shaping fantasies that apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehends. The lunatic, the lover, and the poet are of imagination all compact. One sees more devils than vast hell can hold, that is the madman. The lover, all is frantic, sees Helen's beauty in a brow of Egypt. The poet's eye, in a fine frenzy rolling, doth glance from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven, and as imagination bodies forth the forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns them to shapes, and gives to airy nothing a local habitation and a name. Such tricks hath strong imagination that, 
If it would but apprehend some joy, it comprehends some bringer of that joy, or, in the night, imagining some fear. How easy is a bush supposed a bear? End of More Strange Than True From A Midsummer Night's Dream Act 5, Scene 1 This recording is in the public domain. Performed by Scott D. Farquhar of The Rude Mechanicals, www.rudemechanicals.com.